Hey guys, welcome to episode 4 of Online with Amr, the Internet Guy, the show that helps business owners be more successful online. In this episode, I am with Robin McTeague, the master holistic healer from Richmond, British Columbia. I initially, I approached Robin to discuss her online approach as a business owner and entrepreneur. I learned that she had a bad experience with a web design agency that had prompted her to take matters in her own hands and take back full control of the process of building her business's website. During our conversation, I got to know more about Robin and her unique business services. We ended up discussing motivation, energy, blocks, or as we say, mind blocks, as well as metaphysics. Don't ask me why, listen to the episode and you know. We also spoke about her three different iterations of the website, as well as the experience that she has gone through over the past three or four years in order to finally have a good working website that she feels satisfied about. My conversation with Robin was quite interesting. It got me thinking a lot and it got my brain going on for the rest of the day. I'm certain that you will learn from this conversation as much as I did and you'll enjoy it. Here we go. Hi. Hi, Robin. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? All good, thanks. Hey guys, I have Robin McTague here with me and we're going to have a nice episode of online. So Robin, uh, without further ado, please tell people who you are, where you live, what you do, anything you want to say that people don't already know. All right. I'm Robin McTague, Master Holistic Healer, and I really help you to understand what motivates you, where you get stuck in being really free to be who you are. And I use some unique tools to do that. And we also look at what are the conflicts that you feel internally and really pull that apart so we can actually be our best selves and have a life of freedom and choice. I'm in Richmond, BC. And I, one of the things I love here is the big open sky and having lots of places to walk, though I don't get the hills in for my cardio. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have no hills. No. And the other thing I do as a kind of aside is a metaphysics course for adults and children. And I got drawn to this after dealing with cancer 20 years ago this month. Mm. And so at that time I worked corporately and going back into a workplace around stressed out people was really difficult. And so I learned how to uh, help other people to bring in the energy shields. We're not taking on other people's negativity and we can have ongoing energy and connection with people in a healthier way. Nice. That, that's interesting. Like uh, we had like a brief conversation before uh, recording and uh, you were telling me about um, giving people a path for transformation rather than just tell them where they're at. So yeah. let's hear a little bit more about that. Sure. Yeah. So both with the motivational map, which helps us to see where are we at with our motivation and motivation changes over time. If you think about 10 years ago, what motivated you then is different from now. So it's based on our personality, which is kind of our past, but also a very more stable dynamic but how we view our future and how we view our present life changes. And that's why motivation changes. And then the other piece is that personality, fairly stable, and that's through the Enneagram. So what I do is help you to understand who you are and what do you pay attention to in the world and what are those ego defense mechanisms that come in and help to keep us safe. So the comfort zone that we're always attempting to break out of and we don't know why we can't move past it. It's because of the way that we look at the world and our experience of what we feel is missing. And so this system actually gets to underneath that to our core essence so we can actually see it for what it is and have those blind spots removed and move towards that path of transformation, both psychologically and spiritually. Do you think that this kind of defense mechanism sometimes acts like a shield, like it's kind of we sometimes isolate ourselves from the outside world and technology Absolutely. also makes that worse because we're on Facebook and like we don't see people anymore. 
It does, and especially on your type. So for example, if you're a type two, which is a helper or giver, they really receive connection by having um, that outward connection to you. So that's how they get filled up is by helping you and sometimes to their own detriment. So as a business owner or an entrepreneur, we may be helping to promote other people, but we're not promoting ourselves, for example. And so they may be feeling that lack of connection. So how can we bring that in to get that satisfied and also understand that our personal care and how we take care of ourselves is really important too, and helping to learn what is that for me if I don't know. How would someone who needs help know that they need help? Often it's um, confusion about what I want to do, who am I? I find that I step forward in one moment and then I put the brakes on and I kind of step back. And often that's because of an internal conflict. So on one hand, I have this ability to have high growth and I make a decision like that. Whether or not it's the best decision in the long run, I can make decisions really quick. But another part of me is more relationship-based. And so those people need way more information and also make decisions a lot slower. They're not as open to change as quickly. So if we have two of those things going on internally, we don't know why we're not moving forward. Mm -hmm. And we just know that, why do I do do this? I'm self-sabotaging. I'm, you know, saying I'm going to do something and then I don't follow through. Those kinds of things can happen a lot. Like having two personalities. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I actually, the piece I say about the Enneagram, it's about bringing all parts of ourselves together because we need to do that. So for example, what happens is we have shadow created and that's part of the process with the deeper work is bringing that together and integrating it. So if I'm feeling jealous about your business Mm -hmm. and I don't want to look at that, I put it to the side and it becomes unconscious and plays out in ways that I don't even realize that I'm doing weird things and why did I sabotage there? Why am I feeling uncomfortable around that person? And so when we bring it to light and see, oh, it's just trying to tell me I have a desire for that. And then it's not playing in our unconscious and creating problems we're aware and we just name it for what it is. I love that part because, you know, like there is jealousy not only in business, but in life generally. And uh, one of my good friends, his name is Josh Hall. And um, he collaborates a lot with his competition and he call it co-opetition. And I love that. (laughs) Yeah, He says, let's do some co-opetition. And it's actually in my world in, in web design and development, there is 10 or 100 ways to do one thing. And each person has their own favorite way to get something done. And there's usually, there's no right or wrong. Like all of these ways are definitely right to one point or another, but every person chooses to seize their own way. And a lot of people think like, okay, there's so many web designers. Why does the world need another one? But it's actually, that's not true. There's so many everything. There's so many doctors. There's so many engineers. But you bring you, like you bring your personality. You know, you're not just another number added to the list, but there's a little bit of your soul in your work. If, if you know, if that's, if that's correct to say. Yeah, it's our passion, right? And that's what gets us up. It's like, that's what motivation does is when we're tapped into that and who we are then we we can move forward and we're in alignment with who we are. And certainly when you put two or three or more great minds together in alignment, when they don't feel jealous and they don't feel like they need to break each other's bones to compete, is when great things start to happen. Absolutely. And um, in energy, we have different vibrations and people are going to be connected in different ways. And one of the other things I do is some numerology and we can actually look at what are the lessons between us and what's the outcome if we work through that. So it helps bring more information to our relationships as well. Nice. I forgot to ask you, what's the name of the business? The 
technical name is Robin McTigg Benefits, but I use a life of choice. The life of choice. Yeah. So the website is a life of choice .ca. A life of choice or just life of choice? A life of choice. A life of choice .ca. Yeah. Perfect. I'm going to put that on the screen when producing the video so that people would see the, the link as well. And uh, the interesting part that we've connected on one of the Facebook groups and uh, I didn't know that you're in British Columbia like me. So it's great to talk to somebody from the same place who's mm -hmm. experiencing the same weather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, I have learned that you built your own website yourself. And I attempted. <laughs> attempted. So tell us a little bit of the experience. How did it start and what happened? Yeah. So I was pretty new to business when I started out as an entrepreneur, small business owner, and I'd worked corporately for many, many years. So I could always just call someone up and say, this problem's happening on my computer, just fix it. <laughs> and then when I started out, it was, um, I was in a group and met other people who were entrepreneurs and said, oh, Wix is really easy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I had taken out a, a block where some words were. I was going to put some new words. I could not find out a way to put that block back in. Like when, when you're on a PowerPoint and you say add yeah. text and you had that little box. I spent days. <laughs> oh my God. And it's like, this is not working. This is not worth it. And, you know, people say, oh, but it's the easiest. It's like, well do I really want to do this then if, if it's so difficult and this is supposed to be the easier one. And then I started talking to other people and they're saying, <laughs> don't use Wix. It's, yeah. it's not, um, you know, you're not going to get people on there's problems with it. And then I talked to other people and they said, well, go daddy will do it. But then I found out there's problems because you can't personalize it as much as mm -hmm. like a WordPress site. <laughs> And, and then I started looking, um, there, there's some guru from the US and she helps you to do your website. And so then it's like looking at WordPress themes and attempting to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, okay, I just don't have a clue. And so it was like, okay, I'm going to see what kind of support I can get. And so I'd met someone through a group and through the group, they said, okay, we'll do your website for like 50% off of our normal price. And that person was in Alberta. So we didn't have direct contact, mm -hmm. but I thought, okay, the focus of this group is heart centered entrepreneurs and business owners. And I'm going to trust that this guy knows what he's doing. And I was really upfront saying, look, I'm really green at this. I don't have a clue. I've attempted this and doing this and I'm just lost. And so we had our meeting. I thought it went really well. And then his spouse was the more techie person. And she just started running with it. And okay. it's like, what is she doing? We haven't even decided on stuff. And it just went downhill from there. It was a really disheartening mm -hmm. um, for me because I thought we had a relationship and to me everything is relationship and they had a framework and so I was kind of being blamed it's like you're not putting stuff in the correct framework and I said well I don't understand what the concepts are like if you could explain it to me more then I can do that and then um so there was no training there was no training there was no ongoing discussion about do you like this or that it was just mm. like look at some websites and see what you like and then they came up with their own theme anyway because <laughs> 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 I think they had kind of a that standard assumed thing. what you like yeah <laughs> yeah and it was like the the woman was not calling me back and got really angry at me and I think they're, I don't know if they were having problems themselves, but, if, you know, I talked to him and I thought that we had the communication clear and then the translation didn't necessarily get transferred over. And I'd asked, I was looking at a graphic for something specific and they had their person do it and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And they got really offended. 
<laughs> and it's like, it, it was too corporate for what I wanted. And yeah. it's like, how do I explain that? So I'm kind of taking on the blame that I'm not doing things right. And then he actually came to a conference here that we were part of. So I saw he was there and I messaged him and said, let's meet, right? Yeah. Let's just meet for five minutes and just meet each other. And I thought, you know, if we have a personal rapport. Yeah, sometimes this clears. Yeah, if there's any, any issues. And he, he wouldn't meet. Wow. So it's like, okay. And I was devastated. Like I, I felt so bad. And it's like, if this is what it's like to do business with people, you know, this is not a good way to start. And it turns out he did leave the group because he just was not congruent with mm -hmm. what the philosophy and values were of the group. And so I kind of, I had a functioning, but there was some problems with even getting it going. And then it's like, okay, I'm going to find someone else. And then when my year came up, because the first year they hosted. Yeah, the hosting is finished. You need to move somewhere. Yeah, yeah. and he's like messaging me, well, are you going to renew? And I said, why would I renew? <laughs> A service that I don't like, yeah. <laughs> like, it just kind of, I was shocked. It's like, you haven't talked to me. You wouldn't talk to me. You refused to talk to me. You wouldn't take my calls. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking elsewhere and, and uh yeah, and the next person was way better, totally different. <laughs> so at least um, it's going, the experience is going up. <laughs> yeah, so I've been through three reiterations of the website okay. with different people. And this last one I'm happy with, though it's a little bit sad because um, I was introduced to them through a coach and they're down in the U.S. and the main person who runs it, he's going blind. So I don't know what's oh going to happen God. to his business. So we had a few communication glitches and then I found out what was going on. Cause it's like, this is not who we presented initially. Like we had such a good rapport and then I found out that was going on in his life. So that was really sad. Oh my God. So let me take you back to the first experience a little bit. The first time you realize things are not going well, was the problem lack of control or like um, lack of communication? I I'm trying to, because, you know, usually there are two ways. One way is I don't know how you do it. Just do it. So, like, don't involve me. I'll give you all the content that I have. I'll give you an idea of what I like. Uh, I'll show you some websites that I feel and think that they're aligned with my business. And so that you can get some ideas of what I like so that it's not, let's say, for example, too corporate. But you just go on and run with it. The other one is no, like I want to be kind of in control and I want to see the stuff and approve it before it goes into production. So which one were you? Yeah, and I kind of wanted some control, but I also wasn't sure what to put in some areas. So I mm -hmm. wanted feedback and I thought that was fairly clear when I expressed that, you know, I'm brand new to this. I'm going to need some more hand holding than someone else that really has this all set out. Figured out. Yeah. So it was like, you're the one, like, if I look at this as a project, it would have been safe to say you are the project manager and you're bringing people on to help you with the stuff that you want to do rather than somebody else is taking control and responsibility for the whole project and giving it to you, like uh, giving you the key. Right. right, yeah. So like some of the images, yeah. it was important to me that it express who I was more rather than, you know, just an assumption. And what I see in hindsight is part of it was the writing piece that mm. would have been really helpful for them to say, we cannot review your stuff. That's not part of the package. If you need that assistance, you need to do that outside of here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would have been much clearer to me because I was expecting some feedback based on their history of doing sites for other people. If that was kind of in keeping mm. with a norm for yeah. type of business. Was there no, like the proposal, didn't it lay out like what to expect and was it, it just did. a money proposal or it did talk about 
who brings the content, what happens with the images. And, you know, like usually we're not going to be using something that's copyrighted and, and things like that. Um, not enough detail. And of okay. course, that was another learning piece for me, right? It was about, yeah, it was kind of general. And, you know, this is what we'll do. And we'll do one website and blah, blah, blah but not to that detail because I wasn't aware mm -hmm. of what those pieces were. So that was my um, lack of research or understanding um, of what to ask for in there. Yeah. You usually only learn after an experience. You, you wouldn't know this stuff before. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, right? And um, if, you know, I think someone like you or someone who, would consult I think that would be a really good thing or like if you're working with a coach if they have like someone they can refer you to and this these are kind of the things that um, would be good in your industry or whatever it is like make sure these certain things are taken care of like a checklist or something like yeah. that. yeah like usually the main issue like from my experience the main issues that happen in a website project uh, from the designer's point of view is not having ready content um, because in, in the majority of cases when you're a startup, you have a business idea, but you haven't actually sat down to write content for every page that you want to put to the public and you haven't thought about, okay, so where do the graphics come from? Am I taking photos? It depends on the business, of course. If you're a brick and mortar, it's easier. So like if you're a restaurant or a coffee shop or, or a baker or whatever, it's easier. You can just go to the bakery and take photos of your products. Uh, but when it's a service, it's a little bit harder because you need to actually either get a graphic designer to design custom something customized for you or buy stock images. And in most cases, people don't tell you where to go to get the images. They just want to get the images for you. And of course, these images are purchased. So they don't want to spend the money, buy them. And then you find out that they're not related to what you do and they're not good enough. So I think had they been a little bit more organized and upfront about their process in a step-by-step -step, uh, to put things clearly in the proposal first and follow up like, Clearly, if you wanted to be the project manager, they should have known that, you know, it, it's sometimes the first call is the most important one, uh, which is even the call that precedes giving a proposal. Mm -hmm. It's just the call where we discuss your idea. Like, you know, this is the idea of the business. This is what I want to do. That's what's going to be on the website. Like, this is what I want people to do when they reach my website, like the call to action. Are they booking a consultation? Are they downloading something? What action do you want the user on your website to take? And these things, you as a business owner, you're not supposed to know that before you speak with the specialist because from their experience, they're supposed to guide you through this process. And obviously this is not what happened. Yeah. And one of the other problems was like there were blatant mistakes in like, for example, with the metaphysics course, they had put it into a certain structure. And I said, that's not correct. And there, it was like, assuming that I just didn't like how it was done. Mm -hmm. Instead of us like, this is actually incorrect. This, I cannot post the website with this information because it's inaccurate. Wow. So was the content not provided by you? Like, did they have to go and write I, stuff? That was um, information I'd provided. But they put it the wrong way. Like it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I mean, just, I'm not trying to defend them, but like when you say metaphysics, I feel a bit scared. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, <laughs> like because. Oh like, my God, I know nothing about that. <laughs> yeah. So it was simply like a course outline. Yeah. Yeah, so they should. You should at least know the, the steps or you know, uh, the order of things. How, how would they be presented to the public? Yeah. And now I tell think, me when. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I think they just had put it in in incorrect order and didn't realize that. So it was yeah. like just attempting to get that get that communication to them. <laughs> 
when you got your second experience, how did that improve between the um, first and the second? Yeah, so I met him through a friend who met him through a BNI. And so I actually mm -hmm. went to the BNI as, as a, a guest. guest. Yeah. So I could actually meet him because it's like, okay, I'm meeting the person up front. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put yeah, a face to the name. <laughs> yes. And he I know was, where you live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he was lovely. And, you know, he came out to Richmond, took some photos, came to one of my information sessions and took photos there. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he was a really nice guy. And um, I think maybe a year or two with him. And then it was just a change in focus to my business. And so it, the one he had created for me was really focused on the meditation and mm. healing part, which was great, but very pink and very kind of um, soft. Inviting but, colors. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's great, right? Pink is a very um, calming and connecting color. Um, but I wanted to go a little bit more uh, focused on the other part of my business. And this was just, and I thought rather than um, starting from scratch with him, mm. just because I'd been introduced to this other company through someone and, and saw what they did, um, it seemed like a good fit for what I wanted. For the new, yeah. For the new one. So yeah, it was a really great experience. He was very um, good at incorporating, like, how are we going to do this? Do you want to do like blogging, vlogging, like, how are you going to yeah. be communicating with people and all of those things. So there was a lot of discussion all the way along. And the other thing is he, he was very open to what I did. So we had great philosophical conversations too. So we connected both business wise and personally, which was really nice. Cool. But you, the new idea made you move to a third experience. Yes, because looking at his things, it wasn't necessarily what I needed for the next step. Mm. And that's kind of what I learned through this. It's like people are good at kind of the area that they're good at. Yeah. And so I need to see really good examples of what are they doing for people and how does it look? And so, yes, he did have that very... Oh, and the other thing was he he needed to learn some more boundaries because he was doing mm. so much for people. He needed to increase his prices. Oh, he was okay. overworking yeah. himself <laughs> and to get changes done was just taking oh, yes. too long. And um, I just kept saying, you know, you, you got to get some help. And he said, yes, I am looking for help and it's, stuff. So this is actually a very common story to hear. And it happened to me and it happens to a lot of people because, and this is the part that, I would love for our viewers and listeners to understand uh, a website is not something that you do once and you forget about it. It's a living, it's like a living creature. As long as the business is there, the website is dynamic, things change. Uh, you would need to sometimes change direction completely, uh, change the branding or just add different content and maybe different content format which will push a change in the framework that you use or the plugins or whatever you have on your website. So the idea is this is something that lives as part of your business. And if your business is online, like COVID had forced everyone to go online now, that is the business. Like, you know, 80% of the business for many people comes from online sources now. It's no longer the people you meet in BNI. We, we haven't been able to do a lot of networking since March, face-to-face uh, -face networking. Although I think most of us have done zillions of Zooms, yeah. but it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is when, when somebody, like it, it seems to me like the difference in your experience between the first company or the first person and the second one is like the total opposite. Like somebody was not good at customer service. Maybe they're, they're good at design and technical stuff. And the second person was too good at customer service to the point that they're not making money. Like <laughs> yeah. because they're giving so much. And, and this, is, this is very common because there's a, there's a coaching aspect that happens. Like when, when you're a techie and this is your, your life, 
things that seem so easy for you and that come to you in a minute when you think about a, an issue that needs solving is not necessarily the same with your client. The client needs like full information, full explanation and step-by-step step how this works, which will take time. So a little bit of training and coaching is important here. Um, some people do uh, screen share videos, which is great so that you don't have like, if person number two had this done as a video, rather than spending the time himself with every client, he would have saved a little bit of time. Because after some time, you know, this is the resource you run out of. Like you can't work 24 on 24. You need to, you know, you need time for yourself as well. And there are little bits and pieces that it's hard to charge for. Like if somebody calls me having a problem, let's say with their email, and within two minutes of giving them the answer, I will thank you very much, fixed, bye. What am I going to put on my invoice? Like it was a <laughs> two minute call. You know what I mean? So, mm. so you got to be like very clear on your business structure as to what type of support uh, you're giving. And so that you don't anger your client and you don't kill yourself by yeah. work. <laughs> Definitely like real boundaries, right? And I, that's why I think, um, I'm seeing a lot more people, both in the coaching world and places like yourself, the service based is like the laser coaching, which I think is a really good model because, okay, you get 15 minutes so many times mm. per month or whatever. And so that way, it's like, I know I have you there for the support. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I do. For example, like after, after building somebody's website in my proposal from the beginning, I put an option there for the ongoing maintenance and support so that you're not alone. Once you get it and you take the key, if you get stuck, if you, you know, break something eventually or whatever happens to the site, if you get attacked or hacked or, you know, something happens, at least you still have me, you still have my support. You can call, you can send an email, you know, and, and get something fixed quickly. And you would have paid for this, you know, either monthly or annually. So it gives you like many different web developers and designers do it, you know, differently. But um, for example, mine, you get 30 minutes a month. So you could use that for training. You could use it for consulting. If you have a new idea, a new business, you're changing something, you know, in your business and you want to see how this will reflect on your website. So you need to have a conversation around it. Or for simply fixing something, you know, a plugin broke or uh, an update broke the site or something like this. And the best part of it that you get daily backups. So you can go on and break your site without any fears because we have yesterday's backup that we can restore from in like half an hour or something. And it doesn't take you days. And the same thing, if, you, if you're hacked or your site is attacked in some way, within half an hour, you could be up and running again. And the same thing, again, if you're, you know, your hosting is not good enough, your website is too slow because of the hosting. Uh, there are some companies very famous for being slow. I don't want to mention names because I don't want to be accused, but everyone in our industry knows who I mean. <laughs> so let me move you to the third experience. Was it more balanced now? Like you've had the two opposites of the spectrum. What happened in number three? Yes, it was more balanced. And I get a lot of um, nice comments about my website now. Perfect. So that's really good. And I mean, I do have more content now as I've moved along in my business and done more speaking and different things like that. So I do have more additions. And I totally agree with you that it is a living thing. And that's why I've realized now <laughs> is that this is going to continually change. And so I did have someone, I had like, what I liked about them is they had different people for different aspects. Mm. And so it was really much clear communication. Okay. This it's, it's a billing thing or whatever. I talk to them. If it's a, a creation thing, then I talk to this person. If it's a technical issue on this particular thing, I go here. So it was much more demarked out. Mm. Who do you talk to? And um, I did have like a, a tech person for like what you do. So if I said, okay, now I need to do this now that it's live, 
I don't know how to add an event, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she'd send me a little video on how to do it. Perfect. Yeah, because if, so, if she do it herself for every single client, she run out of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it was perfect because I'm very visual that way. So for just to write out instructions, I find often it's like, well, my screen doesn't look that way. So where yeah. do I go? And so to have a little video to follow along was, was really good for me. And did you feel like after all this experience, like doing it on three iterations, you have like amassed a great deal of experience in getting a website done now, mm -hmm. right? And did you need the same amount of coaching the third time through? Or I'm assuming, but I don't know. I'm assuming you needed less coaching. Yes, you've definitely. Already gone through the... <laughs> yeah, and I was clear, right? And that's and I think that's part of our business process to realize where we are in our business is going to affect it because um, of being clear on my direction, what I want to offer, all of those things, because it's an evolution when you're starting out, as, uh, especially in the service industry. It's different with the bricks and mortar, like you say, but it's like, okay, I'm going to offer this. And I'm going to focus on relationships, but it's like, okay, people don't understand my philosophy around that. So it's like, how can I make it more specific? So that it's something that they're looking for and I can help them in a way that makes sense to them. And also then as I added in different services or different information, then that's going to shift too. And, and having, um, yeah, that just level of experience and connections with people and understanding more what they needed and the process. So all of that certainly helped. Perfect. And how, what, the first question about all the three experiences together, how long did it take from the time you started the first time till today? Is it years, months? Years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Probably about three years now. Okay. So it's like one a year, one iteration Almost. a year. Yeah. It might be a little bit longer, but okay. um, yeah. But around that, I would say. And are you planning to change one more time? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy with the website. It's just a matter of, I know that there's some updates I need to do. And so it's just, you know, getting the writing done and then some of the, the updates there, um, you know, with the different services, it's a bit general on the website. Mm -hmm. And so, and some of the things I offer, um, you know, maybe change up the meditation to something yeah. else, that kind of thing. So it's kind of like the, the content, mm -hmm. excuse me. Um, it's kind of the evolution of the content, which is part of the evolution of the business. And sometimes you want to kind of put your light on a specific area of the business. And maybe as you're saying, meditation, maybe can be the name can be changed to something else if that resonates better with your audience. Right. So not only that, it's like um, that was good at a certain time and people can get so much meditation online now. Mm -hmm. If they just want that, then they can go to different They don't need sites. to come to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't find that that really draws people. So instead, like I'm, I've got um, something I'm working on to do with uh, making decisions or something more around that that would fit more towards the motivation and understanding ourselves. Nice. And do you like almost in what you do, there needs to be some kind of a finding out more about the person who's coming to you. So do you give them this information? Like, is there a form on the website where people, I'm not going to say take a test because that would be a specific path, but like where they can give more info. So you know, whether they're the right fit for you or not, or how does it happen? Or do they just book a call and, and you take it from there. Yeah, the majority is a clarity call, I call it, because we may or not may not be the correct fit, but I can often, if we're not, then I can tell you what you might need because I use a lot of my intuitive side as well. Oh, I love that part. Yeah. yeah it's not like, hey, we can't work together. You're on your own. <laughs> like, exactly. Okay, I need or help. I can, <laughs> exactly. And then I can explain more because these are concepts that might be foreign to them. And so I find if I put explanation, it doesn't necessarily 
give them what they need mm. because I think one of my focuses is that we are unique and we need to have something yes. specific. Yes, every case is unique, yeah. And it's the same with doing that initial package, right? It's like what comes out of that may or may not be what we thought about in the beginning, right? Because we're uncovering what are those issues. We have the kind of um, problem that we're seeing mm -hmm. externally, but it's like, how is that relating to us and what's going on for us inside? And most people aren't spending that time doing that. So that's part of what I do is kind of slow them down. Okay, let's see yeah. what's going on um, <laughs> and, and how we're perceiving it because a lot of it is about reframing what's going on and normalizing things for people because so often we feel it's just us going through it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, everyone thinks that their problem hasn't been seen by somebody else or hasn't been experienced by somebody else. It's normal. I think in this day and age, we don't give ourselves time to work on ourselves like you know and and i even though like i'm the internet guy <laughs> i think the internet has sometimes a dark side whereby it can negatively affect you if you lose yourself in it <laughs> and uh one of the movies that i want to see on netflix somebody told me about is called the social dilemma um if you have Net netflix look it out I'm just waiting. I'm trying to get my kids to watch with me. And of course, they don't want to. <laughs> and uh, the trailer just gives you an idea. It's about how they created social media to be addictive. Mm. So it's kind of how they suck the life and the time out of us when we're always running, we're always going after different things. And like, sometimes you feel like, oh, my God, like I'm in a member of I don't know how many Facebook groups. Um, I have learned to have social media time. Like I, I, I look at the clock and I say, I'm going to do one hour of Facebook. These are the groups that I'm going to check. And then part of this one hour, maybe 10, 15 minutes, just friends and funny stuff. And, you know, maybe watching videos, nonsense videos, and whatever. Yeah. <laughs> or the debates, because <laughs> right. we have one in, one in BC and one in the US. <laughs> exactly. And the other thing I like to do is you can um, pin your top 10 groups. And then so whatever you're working on, like if you're in a challenge or if you're in doing something with a specific group, then you can pin that and go to that one yeah. directly and ignore all the others. So it's like, yeah, using those tools. But it is, it's that intermittent reward that we learn about in psychology, right? That that's why people get addicted to gambling and all of that. So it does give us some euphoria and so our, our yeah. brain gets uh, <laughs> connected to that. And the thing is we can do it other ways, right? Like I really encourage people to break up their day with some dancing, just put on a song that you like and just move around in your place. Like it just, we get idea. oxygen to the brain. And if you can sing along because then we connect to our body, but so often we're in our head and we have to connect to our body and our heart as well. That's a great idea. Like uh, I'm, I should do more of that, like something similar, sing, dance, jump up and down, yoga. Um, there are so many things. I mean, I'm, I'm lucky because I'm still active at my age. And I, you know, if I remain healthy and I'm hoping so, <laughs> I, I want to remain active for as long as I live. So uh, I just, you know, in, in, in British Columbia, we're, we're very lucky with the nature here. You can just often uh, go out and have a different experience if you want every day, like, uh, you know, water, hills, whatever you desire. Yeah, it's beautiful. But the thing is, especially I think with COVID, we get stuck so much on the computer. We're not giving ourselves the micro breaks during the day. Yeah. And actually, if we do that and give ourselves like uh, 50 minutes of work, 10, 15 minutes of respite where we're getting water, most people are dehydrated. Oh, God. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> And some movement and some sunshine or, you know, we don't always have sunshine, but at least looking out and getting some light. Um, and that helps our sleep cycles and everything as well. So the more we can, and then just a little bit of movement, right? It doesn't have to be a big thing where I have to put a half hour aside for a yoga. Yeah, you know. The only way this works though, is that it has to be regimental. Like you, if you're going to plan it and ignore it, it's not going to work. So, yes. uh, I don't know, like, 
I've seen an app, but I've, I didn't use it because it was like there was too much control. It locks your computer. So yeah. <laughs> if you say, okay, I'm going to do 25 minutes of very focused work, then I have to take five minutes off. Every 25, you take five. So it's like kind of half hour cycles. It locks your machine. You can't use it for the five minutes. Right. But of course, like if you're an addict, you can just sit idle in front of a screen for five minutes and it will unlock again. So <laughs> you gotta like, you, you have to do what you're supposed to do. So that's, that's the only way it will work. Yeah. And we can only do that when we can connect to it. And that's what I do with the motivation. It's right. Like, why are you doing it? What's that underlying reason? And how can you um, connect it to something that you want? So for example, if I'm a searcher and want to make a difference, then how am I going to help others and make that difference? So if I know that I'm working on something that is going to help me connect with someone and help hmm. them, then that's going to fuel my fire so that I can say, yeah, I really need to focus on that. That's great advice because like you, I, I used to work for the airlines before and, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was a cabin crew and we used to do a lot of safety. Like I was one of the trainers uh, at some point, but usually when you work for an airline, safety is your, the main role for you, like giving people food is secondary to their safety and security. And um, when we train people, you know, for evacuation, God forbids, if you need to evacuate the plane and, you know, some questions pop up and some of the questions is, what if somebody reaches the door and they don't want to jump in the slide and the trainer will say, just push them. So like, oh, what if they break a leg? And the trainer will say, well, but at least you saved their life. Like if they stay on the plane, they'll die. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like you need to do what you need to do. It, it's this is it, it's it's for your survival. And one part of it is also, you know, when they do the oxygen mask, the demonstration and they say, put your own mask first. The same thing goes for crew. And what I remember from my training when I was brand new, when I was a freshman, that someone said, because I said, you know, this innate uh, desire to help others, right? And you say like, but what about children? Shouldn't you help children first? And my trainer said, you're no good for them dead. Like put your mask first, then think about anyone else. Like, <laughs> it's like, if you don't put your mask, you're dead. Like you're not gonna be help anyone, not yourself, not anyone else. So this goes also for any other profession, like whatever you're doing, if you're not looking after your well-being, and I'm not saying be selfish, I'm just saying have a little bit of time to reflect and think about yourself as, you know, uh, me being uh, a techie. If if I was a robot, right? Don't I need charge, oiling, dusting? <laughs> well, yeah. It's the same thing. I'm a human. You need some of these things in a in a different way, but like you need yeah. water. You need clear mind, you know, um, you need to be free of fear. Uh, you need to be free of, I don't know, worry. Yeah, I call it self first. And that's what we teach in the metaphysics course. So that's uh, exactly in the, the example I give is the oxygen mask. So yeah, we're very, very clear oh, there. <laughs> let Yeah, let, let, let's tell people, try because I don't know metaphysics, right? I, I, and Anything with the word physics get me scared, although I was good. <laughs> <laughs> I was good at physics at school, but. Good. <laughs> so that it just means the energy and physics, you know, it has a path. So it's energy has a path. Oh, because energy doesn't die. Energy moves. Yeah. And so it's um, how to be in, in alignment with what we want. So it's about learning to use that that isn't seen in our world but is actually has a science behind it. So it's, it's combining the science with the kind of intuitive uh, spiritual world out there. So that's why, you know, there's quantum physics and a lot of stuff that's been taught for years and years is only being recognized by science now because it does work, right? And, and that's what we do. It's like, okay, let's do this. If I can learn to do the healing then I'm just gifted. But if I can teach you, then it's a science. And if it's been taught for oh, over 35 okay. years, then it's a science. And we're so working it's kind of principles. It's kind of you can teach people how to do self-healing. Yes. 
So whenever they feel like there's an issue, there's a problem, they're not happy or they're not productive or like something, they feel a block somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily the writer's block, that's normal. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you feel like you have a block or something that's stopping you from kind of, I don't know, like uh, growing uh, or growing your business or growing as a person or something that's stopping you from achieving your full potential. And you can feel it. Sometimes you have a feeling something is off. You don't know what it is. And, and sometimes people try to box it like, oh, it's people that I work with or it's my partner or it's my kids or whatever. But like, because it's easy for us just to put it in a box and put a label on it. And that's not the answer. The answer is probably to learn how to find out where is the block so that you can unblock it. Yeah. So it's about learning to go within and it's an active style of meditation. So you get tools to actually go in and access di different information for yourself to see what's going on for you. And then mm -hmm. there is ongoing support in the community as well. But a lot of it is because our society has taught us to look outside yeah and it's about going in and finding those answers within because we're the best people to know what's important to us it's just taking the time and using the techniques and in this case shifting your vibration so that we can help to bring those unconscious patterns forward because bringing that self-awareness is what's going to help us to be able to see it and make a different choice perfect so as the internet guy i'll say something that's probably completely incorrect now <laughs> it's like putting the google search box on you and then you can click and search inside hey what's blocking me so it's <laughs> yeah that's a good analogy <laughs> the internet analogy <laughs> right <laughs> I, i'm going to copyright that <laughs> perfect so robin thank you very much for doing this with me today and before we go i'd like to give you the opportunity to tell people you know uh, our listeners and viewers, uh, any advice that you'd like, whether it's about energy, quantum, quantum physics. Uh, no, it wasn't quantum physics. It was uh, metaphysics. <laughs> yeah. metaphysics, or whether it's about business or how to go about their websites, <laughs> whatever you yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, number the one for me is during this time is acknowledging that there's a lot of feeling going on that we're not necessarily aware of, that we're tapping into not only ourselves, but other people. There's a lot of grief out there because we can't do what we normally would do. We don't have the same connections. And it's both in your personal and your business life. Things are different. And different things that got you going before may not be in your life. So you're not finding as much energy and ability to get things done. So please have some kindness and compassion for yourself and just acknowledge the feelings that will help you a lot is to just say, Oh yeah, what am I feeling? And then it just moves through us rather than being held in our body and our mind and um, helping us to, you know, maybe we're not sleeping well because mm -hmm. we're not addressing some of these things. Perfect. Yeah, it, it's definitely true. Uh, so for me, guys, like uh, I can't top that advice. Uh, I can only tell you how to get your website up and running. So, <laughs> but that would be, <laughs> <laughs> that would be like uh, the other episodes. And uh, I certainly enjoyed speaking with you, Robin, today and, and learning more about what you do. And, and uh, certainly th the vibration for me, like now, I'm, I don't know, for some reason, I feel happier, maybe because I talk too much. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's been great having you and hope this will not be the last time we speak. Yeah, definitely. I'm really great to meet you and I look forward to learning more about you as well.